And to discuss this further, I'm joined by former Information and Broadcast Minister and uh, the present Lok Sabha MP, Mr. Manish Tiwari, here with us. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Manish Tiwari. Thank you for taking our time and joining us here at Mirror Now. Now, Mr. Tiwari, Mr. Dorsey has gone ahead and made some startling claims. But at the end of the day, they are but only claims. Shouldn't the Congress Party carry out their due diligence before they readily endorse what he is saying? What Mr. Dorsey is saying is not surprising at all. There has been a general erosion and subversion of the freedom of speech and expression and civil liberties over the past nine years. And unfortunately, it is not confined to the central government alone. Even state governments, certain state governments, have been extremely coercive and uh, heavy-handed when it comes to uh, dealing with uh, uh, criticism, even constructive uh, criticism. So there is an environment of intolerance which has pervaded the entire uh, uh, discourse environment in this country ever since the UPA demitted office in 2014. And to a, to a substantive extent, even the media is, uh, is, has itself to blame because certain sections of the media, when they decided to turn into pet performing poodles of certain uh, interests, you know, you set a benchmark whereby you then uh, sent out a message that if we were dealt in a particular manner, which is coercive and heavy handed, we are willing to fall in line and, uh, and, and, and do whatever uh, is the line which is dished out to us. But Mr. Tiwari, you have also been in the government and you know that the tech giants operating in India are bound to fall in line with the Indian laws. And if they do have any objection to the Indian laws or the manner in which they are operating, if they feel it is being impinged upon, they always have the option of taking a legal recourse, which they have been doing in the past as well. Look, I am not going into the merits of the allegations of other banks. All I'm saying is that there are governments and governments. You need to have a certain level of tolerance and magnanimity to criticism uh, in order to allow dissent and the freedom of speech and expression to flourish. If you are intolerant, which unfortunately has been the specter across the board in the past nine years, then you can always unleash the instrumentalities of the state and use them in a manner which quelches uh, any form of dissent. Because in this country, unfortunately, the process is the punishment. It is the harassment uh, which is meted out when you have multiple state agencies uh, which decide to go after an individual or an organization. Ultimately, Whatever charges uh, the government has leveled against any media entity, whether it is a social media entity or otherwise, which of those charges have uh, stood in a court of law? They are all have. They are all based on foundations of sand. In the past nine years, what have been the level of convictions juxtaposed against the harassment which the uh, government instrumentalities? once they are unleashed, have meted out to people. But, uh, you know, now Mr. Jack Dorsey is saying that they were threatened and they were threatened that against their houses being raided or the pressure that was being exerted by the government. But these are unsubstantiated claims, Mr. Tiwari. The BJP has been claiming that the Congress latches on to any claim by a foreign critic so long it's bashing India and its government. Should the Congress not be more mindful in choosing the political agenda? Well, nationalism or patriotism is not the monopoly of any political party. And least of all people who have zero contribution in India's freedom struggle. So therefore, I think before handing out certificates of nationalism and patriotism, people should actually reflect and uh, introspect deeply into their own backgrounds. 
so uh, it does as i was earlier saying it is not about a foreign critic or b foreign critic or a domestic critic or b uh, domestic uh, critic the fact is that there is a culture of intolerance and unfortunately it goes across the board you know whosoever has is an authority wherever you know feels that they can use the instrumentalities of the state to uh, make the uh, media fall in line and unfortunately uh, as i was earlier uh, saying that uh, when the media was asked to bend you know they willingly decided to crawl and prostrate and so therefore when you sow the wind you uh, reap the whirlwind and therefore you send out a message that if we are dealt with in a particular manner uh, we are willing to fall sorry away. again Professor Tiwari, you know, uh, several multinational companies are given many leverages in India. Do you think there can be certain vested interest? Why now? Why could he not bring this up when he was the CEO of Twitter? Well, those are questions which you need to ask him. I am not Mr. Jack Dorsey's lawyer. I am making a generic point about the deterioration of both uh, the freedom of speech and expression. and civil liberties over the past 9 years why weren't these allegations being made when you had a upa government why weren't these allegations were being, uh, being not being made when you had a previous nda bjp government why are these allegations coming up now but mr tiwari that time you didn't even have the social media but the inb minister i'll want to bring to your knowledge it now maintains that twitter back in the day under jack dorsey did not align with the indian law do you think that there is a need to check disinformation which can fuel sensitive situation or should there be new law especially for the social media sites obviously there is no smoke without fire and it it does not require uh, any foreign or domestic critic uh, to really appreciate what is the kind of environment uh, where freedom of speech and expression uh, which prevails in this country i mean when you actually required the supreme court to step in and to put a halt to all proceedings in sedition matters across the country the supreme court obviously did not do that lightly it was primarily because it would have felt that there is gross abuse and abuse and misuse of certain provisions which unfortunately were there in the indian penal code you know for a specific purpose which is beyond its expiry date from the tiwari what should have the indian government done then in situation like where the inb minister now maintains that there was misinformation being spread through the social media site given that situation then do you think there should be new laws in uh, using this as a precedent now well why didn't you then prosecute and convict them if twitter was in the wrong if they were acting against india's national interest why didn't you prosecute and convict them yes. you have the instrumentalities at the state at your disposal you should have filed charge sheets against them under the relevant laws you should have convicted them you do not require another law you require less of laws and you require uh uh an atmosphere where dissent can bloom where freedom of speech and expression can bloom and governance is not the monopoly of any political party in a democracy the the uh, the wheel of democracy keeps spinning it's about the precedents it's about the traditions that you set it's about uh, what is your attitude uh, towards democracy whether you have a democratic disp uh, uh, disposition or not or is your uh, definition of democracy that as long as what you say whether it is right or wrong is carried it is fine but if there is an alternative point of view it must be squelched and the messenger must be shot so therefore there is a graver danger uh, which these attitudes actually pose uh, to democracy as a whole and that's why i'm saying across the board 
whether it is central governments or state governments, certain state governments. Uh, unfortunately, I have completely and absolutely uh, gone on the wrong track. And just because they have the authority, they have certain state instrumentalities at their disposal, uh, that does not mean you undermine those fundamental values which have been enshrined in our constitution by the founding fathers of this country in order to protect and preserve something which is sacred for which we uh, sacrificed thousands and thousands of lives when we won our independence, and that is democracy. Well, uh, thank you so much, Mr. Tiwari, for taking our time and joining us here at uh, Mirror Now. We leave the conversation at that for the moment.